Hello, my name is Daryl Brown. Um, welcome to the show. Midwest Kids, it came about because I travel around the world and, you know, I hear people be like, I'm from the East Coast, I'm from the West Coast, I'm from down South. And then when Midwest would come up, it would be almost like, it's like we're a third world country or something. It would be like, oh, yeah, I've been to Chicago, or I had like a layover in Detroit before, or do you know LeBron? Like weird, it's like weird, it's like it's cornfields out there. It's like, oh, like, you know, so I wanted to kind of create something that was like easy and can give like people from the Midwest a, a sense of pride. So I'm living in Toledo, Ohio, and I'm working for Norfolk Southern Railroad as a conductor. I'm like driving trains and stuff. And then on my days off, I would be like helping a friend of mine, Zach Beebe. You know, he's a visionary, he's a business guy. He was like, I want to open a boutique and they open a streetwear store. And I would help BB run the store, like being a buyer. We used to throw like local, like concerts and stuff. So like, for example, one show we did, we booked Wiz Khalifa for $5,000. We, we booked um, Big Sean on a homie favor because one of his good friends at the time worked at our store and we got MGK for $150 in gas money. And we, th we threw the show at Bowling Green University and it was like major. None of these guys are signed yet. Everybody's just like, you know, grinding and stuff like that. And Machine Gun Kelly walked up to me at the, um, at the show. I'm doing like a, I'm wearing like a red hoodie that I got from like Karma Loop. And he's like, man, I really love that hoodie. Like, you know, like, where'd you get it from? And I was like, oh, I was about to tell him. And I was like, I'm a stylist. I can get you one. And then he's like, your stylist, he like looked at me like, you're at Bowling Green, like, you know what I mean? Like, what are you talking about? And that was like my first client. I like literally started with him like on a hundred words and running. And we've been like, that was like my first official client. That was pretty much like the birth of like my, my fashion dreams on like an official level, you know what I mean? I grew up in Toledo, Ohio. Grew up in inner city. Um, I'm a project kid, you know what I'm saying? Public housing authority. I lived in New York for about 10 years. I lived in Los Angeles for about four and a half years. It's like 15 years of being gone. I've traveled all around the world. I've been blessed to travel all around the world. Live in other countries, live in Chicago, live in Berlin. It was time to bring it back home to the Midwest and kind of like share my platform and pour into other creators and people in my area so it can be like more impactful. And I just feel like there's a lot of, you know, untapped into talent, potential, and just resources in the Midwest. I shot a whole commercial for Adidas to launch the From program in the projects that I grew up with. We're using all Toledo people, you know what I mean? So so I built I built both brands at the same time. I started Daryl Brown first. It's more, I'm wearing it right now. It's more like cut and sew. You're dealing with a calendar. You're dealing with production, making, you know, garments and things like that from scratch. So um, I, I was like doing that and I realized that was like a process. Like, you know, it would be like an upload, download where it was like, I'm putting together samples, references, and then I'm waiting like three weeks or a month for like things to be made and come back to me. And I just needed something to feed my creativity, like my everyday. So then that's how Midwest Kids came about. It was like, okay, with Midwest Kids, I could like drop 30 hoodies a month if I wanted to. Midwest Kids is like my mixtape artist. And then like Daryl Brown is like an album. So I'm dropping one collection a year for Daryl Brown because it's more of like a process and I'm, I'm I'm trying to make clothes that people can wear every day. You know what I mean? So, and it's a brand that it's not about me. I'm not like, yes, it's my brand, but I don't have to go out and be like the mascot or the face. It's like the people, it's, it's, for, it's for the people, by the people, from the people, you know? My father worked at Chrysler for 30 years. He wore the same boots and, and like dicky outfit or Carhartt and stuff like that every day. And it was not about fashion, you know? It was like, cause he was really working. So to be in this, in this space now where like these high-end brands are making work wear collections like none of them have ever did hard lab or a day in their life 
Yeah, I find it like it like it puts a chip on my shoulder, which is why I, I went into like making my own workwear brand. Like, cause Carhartt is my favorite brand. You know, like Carhartt and Dickies, I, lo I love those like timeless, lifelong brands. Those are like 20, 40, 100 year old, you know, um, potential brands. So I want Midwest kids to grow and be like a 20, 30, 50 year old brand. And it's just a staple household name. I want to be at the table with like Ben Davis, Carhartt. I want you to be like Ben Davis, Carhartt, Red Hook, Dickey, Daryl Brown. And it's like not a thing, it just rolls. It's like that. When you think about those brands, those brands are for everybody, you know? It's like classic, it can grow. Your clo a person closet over 20 years will go through so many ups and downs. But you ha have you ever noticed like you'll look up and be like, why do I still have this gray hoodie? How did this gray hoodie survive 15 years? Or why do I still have this pair of classic jeans or pants and or this jacket? I done been through so many phases of life, but I still got this. And it's like, that's where I want my brand to be.